Hi, welcome to making PHP web applications from scratch. In uh, this series, we are going to make a PHP applications from scratch. And while doing so, we have to follow all the coding uh, best practices and also test driven development whenever possible. While making this series, I assume you already have a PHP development environment setup and you have basic knowledge of PHP. If you're starting a PHP from the scratch, then probably this series is not good for you. This series is more about the coding best practices and the things which are defined in PHP right way. So for this training, we are going to make a very small application. It will be a console based application. We are going to make a calculator. But again, we also have to think about the architecture. So that's a problem statement. We want to build a calculator that receives two number and does an operation. Seems pretty easy, but no, let's add some complexity. We do not know which kind of operations we want to do yet. And we'll decide them in the future. And this calculator may have a really complex operations. We are trying to replicate agile uh, process of making software. We are in the first sprint. We have very basic requirements. Uh, we have to make a calculator with only one feature sum. We'll get an operation name. We'll get an array of few numbers. We need to perform that operation on that number. But since we are doing it in agile way, going forward, we are going to have many more operations and uh, not only we, uh, there could be multiple developers who will be working on the same software. So ideally we should have to architect our software in a way that uh, 10 different developers can work on 10 different operations without impacting each other. We are going to make a, a skeleton of that application first with a first very basic operation. To be correct, this is one of the interview questions which uh, I generally prefer to ask uh, for the machine test to the candidate. So let's see what I exactly expect a candidate to do with this machine test. To start with, let's start uh, with a very basic console application. So first uh, we need to go to some folder. So let me go to say cd dav slash github and uh, let me make a directory now let's uh, make a project folder seems good before starting any project we might uh, like to initialize the git repository so i do git in it if you're not familiar with git i will uh, make some git workshop as well we can go through them. To start, let's create a readme file. Let's say make a readme file. That's it, let's save it. And if I do ls, we have a new file and if I do get status, we have one file to be committed. So let's add it, get add readme.md, get commit, copy. So nowadays Composer is a de facto standard of any PHP application. So let's initialize Composer. It will ask uh, for some of the basic information. What should be our package name? So let me say KS workshop slash calculator description. I don't want to add description for now. Author, yes, it's me. Minimal stability. I want to leave blank. What is this? So we are making an application. So it's a project license, MIT license. You want to define dependencies right now? No, I don't want to define any dependency right now. Any dev dependencies? No, I don't want to. This is going to be our composer.json. Should we generate it? Yes, I want to generate it. Would you like to add vendor into git ignore? Yes, I would like to. So now if I do ls or ls hyphen a, so we have a git ignore file as well. If I say git status, we have a git ignore file, we have a composer file. But before we can commit, let's see a bit more in detail so let me open this project in uh, my favorite editor code visual studio code to be exact
Let me do it on full screen. Files. Now, in our uh, git ignore file, we have a vendor folder and we also have a composer.json file uh, created. Now, composer also do a lot of auto loading for us. So, let me first add a few things here. Now, what exactly this is doing? Don't worry about it for now. Immediately, we'll come to it. So, obviously, we need some folders to create our test cases create our source code let's do it uh, let's create a new folder say I want to create a folder SRC and I want to keep all my source code there and within that uh, we might want to have uh, some further folder so within that I create PHP reboot so this is exactly what it is saying whenever I say namespace PHP reboot it should go and look into directory src slash php reboot and all of my code will be within this folder and it will start with namespace php reboot similarly we want to write the test cases so we can also create a new folder test and same folder structure now there are two different things auto load and auto load dev there are few code that need to run on production that code always go in auto load or require but there are few tools that we need only at the time of development auto load dev and require dev which we don't have right now comes under that category once we have that uh, we might want to do composer update so let's uh, go there again it will effectively uh, load all the namespaces and uh, all those files will be available as a part of composer auto loading it will take some time so i will get back once it is done so it's done now i want to install php unit so that uh, i can do test drive and development but before that unfortunately i don't have a latest version of php right now it's uh, my old personal man ideally it should be 7.2 but yeah so i have php 5.6 which version of php unit should i use so if I, uh, we go to php unit.de that is the website of php unit we can see if uh, we are having php version 5.6 that ideally i am having right now so i can simply use php 5 let's go to php 5 and uh, how to install it we can do it through composer composer required app so let's go there again and run composer required I'll be get back once it is done. So it's done. Now we have PHP unit 5 installed. Now let's go back to our code. Uh, you can see PHP unit 5 in composer.json file. Let me come here again. Get a status. Uh, we have quite a few new files ready. Now notice we also have composer.log file. So if uh, someone has uh, not clear about composer basics, uh, I'll be uh, creating a, another workshop for composer. But composer.log file basically logs the version. So if you want to quickly check, let's go there. And uh, so here we have PHP unit. It is saying we are going to use PHP unit 5.7.27. So although PHP unit is in the development folder, so it will never go on the production. But in case we go to the production, we might want to log at 5.7.27. It is just a way to uh, save our production for example while developing it's uh, 5.7.27 but when we go to the production uh, assume there is uh, say 5.7.30 of obviously not php unit of any other software and suppose there is a bug in that so our production system will fail so we might want to make sure whatever version we use during the development should be used on the production so composer.log actually do that task it locks a version to a particular build going ahead let's close it now probably we might commit some of the things so get sorry uh, we need to add first get add dot get ignore composer dot json composer dot lock uh, we do get a status they are ready to be committed so let's commit get commit hyphen am installed php unit done before we close this video we have one more final step to be done php unit needs some configurations we do php unit dot xml yes we need xml 
but we are going to commit this file so we create distribution file we will not create phpunit.xml but phpunit.xml.dist file and whoever will take the project checkout uh, will actually do that make a copy with the name of phpunit.xml or better we can rename that to phpunit.dist.xml so that uh, so that syntax highlighting can be done better now i have copy pasted it from uh, one other project so let's quickly change uh, some of the things So we have the name of test suit. Test PHP reboot is still there. We all still want to test all the test cases within that. And our source code is going to be in source slash PHP reboot. Now coverage for that we must have Xdebug installed. So let's comment it out for now. This part we'll be discussing it uh, a bit later. So that's all we have all set. Um, maybe we can uh, finally go and do a copy. phpunit.xml to php unit dot xml and we are done now we, i don't want to commit that php unit dot xml so maybe one final step uh, i'll go again to git ignore and i'll put php unit dot xml in ignore list that's all maybe committing uh, last files git add dot git ignore in next step we need to start making the project so it is going to be a console application so we need some console framework for this particular project uh, let's use symphony console application symphony console component We'll be discussing more about it in next video. So stay tuned. Let's meet in next video.